Black Falcon looking for a landing at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland from Ames, Iowa. Harrison Barnes representing the Golden State Warriors of uh, Oakland, California. The Warriors are truly the Bay Area's team, but they do call Oakland home, at least for now. And even though they do have plans to head to San Francisco shortly, the soul of basketball in the Bay Area lies in the East Bay. Here's Doug Harris with the historical perspective. The most important thing in any historical situation is to start at the beginning and find out how you got to this point. Al Adels has been an integral part of Bay Area basketball history, dating all the way back to when the Warriors moved out west to San Francisco from Philadelphia in 1962. Adels holds the distinction of having played for the team, coaching the team, and serving as the general manager and front office executive over the span of 54 long years. Everybody can converge on him because he dumps the ball out. In addition, Al Adels also coached the Warriors to his last NBA Finals championship 40 years ago in 1975. You guys played Philly in 67, right? Yeah. So this was the next That's year. Here, right? Yeah, after Rick, after Rick left. Rick left went to the ABA. Because the ABA champions, they won the championship. There have been a lot of people involved in studying the history, but Doug, in my mind, is one of those people who really dig deeper to find out what happened prior to getting this point. You can't be successful in doing anything unless you enjoy doing it. And Doug really enjoys it. I, I really enjoy talking to him because he gives me some insight into what was going on back then, too. Every time I get a chance to come visit these parks and shoot around and talk to people, interact with folks. You know, Orange? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, Orange. It's always special because this is the birthplace of basketball in the East Bay at these different parks. It basically all started at the Firmary Park, where all of these legendary players from McClyman's basically own their skills in, in basketball. The Firmary Park was the mecca for a highly competitive basketball throughout the entire Bay Area. And when you look back at some of the people who matriculated there, uh, you start with Bill Russell. I can remember hearing stories from some of my coaches about how Bill Russell really cut his teeth in basketball at the Firmary Park. Bill Russell could block shots and rebound better than anybody he'd ever seen. That's how much of an imprint he put on the opponent, and you just didn't forget it because you thought, sure, you got the shot off, and it's going to whistle right by your ear. Pino was the basketball guru in the East Bay because he had a great team at the University of California, and once you go there, you know, everybody else pales in comparison. McClellan's High School was head and shoulders above scholastic basketball, not only here in the Bay Area, not only in California, but in the world. We became known as the best that Northern California area had to offer, and everywhere we went, we knew that we were gonna be well respected, and also that we were gonna kick some butt. All of the great players that came out of McClendon's, like the Paul Silas's, the Joe Ellis's, the Jim Tolliver's, Otis Allison. Our first year here in Oakland, we had two outstanding players who played in McClendon's High School, Joe Ellis and Otis Allison, two outstanding players who gave us a great, great lift as far as the team was concerned, and two players who really, really made a great difference to our team. From 1958 to 1963, McClendon's High School won the Tournament of Champions six consecutive times. When you talk about the TOC, it was the stage for all of us that were in high school. I'd gone over several times uh, to see the TOC. The TOC, uh, to me, was a showcase for the best basketball talent in Northern California. It was the Super Bowl of, of prep basketball in this area. It was just like every player's dream to play in that tournament of champions. I can remember going to my first TOC and watching Gene Ransom go up against Bill Cartwright for the 1975 championship. We called him the dream. I mean, he was Gene the dream, and from his sophomore year, you could tell that he was gonna be a great basketball player.
<laughs> Live Oak Park will always be special to me because it was the place where I learned how to play basketball. I can remember hearing the stories of the outdoor summer league here at Live Oak where all of the college players throughout Northern California would play here on this playground. You couldn't be afraid uh, uh, to, to play and, and, and be in that atmosphere because they were going to, uh, it was going to be your demise if you did. And uh, I won the most valuable player of that tournament uh, when I was a senior in high school, and I still have the trophy today. When you talk about Paul Silas, you knew that he uh, knew how to manipulate himself around that basket. Hey, shut up, man. And it was very, very difficult to move. And uh, I can remember playing against him many, many times. And uh, he's just a great, great player, but more importantly, he's a great person. I can remember watching Phil Chenier play at Live Oak. We played up at Live Oak. And when I'd go out to the parks and play, I started off seeing myself as Jim Tolliver. Now, this guy's about 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 you know, the jump shot that he had kind of fading away elbow straight, cock back, and the follow through, wrist, you know, I just saw myself doing that, and I think that's what you do. When you talk about outstanding shooters, a name that always comes to mind is Phil Chenier. Phil Chenier was one of the best shooters uh, in his era to come along. Just so many great players that have came up through this part. <laughs> Mosswood Park was probably the toughest part to either get on the court or win a game. <laughs> Mosswood Park was a gathering place for this new group of young players who came to prominence here in the East Bay. You got your Jason Kidd, your Gary Payton. Drop steps, goes baseline, up and underscore! Hook Mitchell. <laughs> Yeah, Antonio Davis. These guys would all come to Mosswood Park and play with us older players. And when you look at their resume, you just realize the imprint that was made on them when they first started playing basketball in the East Bay. Because what happened is they had great role models. These guys started playing in junior high and throughout high school. And you could tell there was going to be something special about this group of kids coming up. What's always important for everybody, not just athletes, but people in general, to give back. Because there's an old saying, if you don't give back for what you've been able to accomplish, you're gonna prevent a number of young people from growing and doing things that they can help people when they come along. When you think about inner city basketball around the country, I think this East Bay corridor of Berkeley, Oakland, and Richmond has to be up there on the top, on par with New York, on par with Chicago, based on the number of championship caliber players that have came from these different playgrounds. And this will always be a special place in my heart as a basketball player. Terrific work, Doug Harris, who is a wow. Berkeley High grad. How about seeing the great Pete Newell in that mm -hmm. piece? <laughs> It'll shivers there.